What's going on? It is your man, Corey. Welcome to another episode of Counter Corey, where I try to come in here and break down some events that have been going on in music this week. Give you guys my opinion so we can talk back and forth about some of these things. I love hearing what you have to say in the comment section below, or you can always come and chop it up with me on Instagram or Twitter. I put my link to that in the description below as well, so you can come follow me. Let's talk about some of this stuff, man. So before I get into the topics that I have for today, I just want to say, man, RP Juice World. I don't really want to talk about it on this episode just because by now I'm sure you've heard all of the details that are, you know, surrounding what has happened with his untimely death. So I just want to take these couple minutes out to say, man, RP man, like he will be missed. That was genuinely one of my favorite artists from like this past year. He was someone I was looking forward to seeing and, and growing with, you know, over the next couple of years. Like I really wanted to see him perform and all that stuff, man. And just as a fan, bro, it, it, like, I, I can't even lie, it really hurts. Some of it makes me angry from a fan's perspective, but, you know, um, hopefully hopefully, what comes from this situation is um, a renewed outlook from artists who kind of who kind of are living the glorified drug lifestyle, man. There are a lot of artists that I like that I can tell from their music and just from the way they carry themselves that they're, like, really, really into the drugs, man. And I hope that just, like I said, what happened with Juice World wakes up a lot of these artists, especially a lot of these young artists, man, and gets them to change their life and just change the way they're moving about these drugs and stuff. So, um, but like I said, I don't want to go too deep into it because I'm sure by now, by the time of me making this video, you probably know all the details and know everything that's going on. So I just wanted to take that time out to give my condolences. So I guess let's dive into the topics of the day, man. What I want to start with is 6 9 and his letter, right? So... On last week's episode, I talked about how 6 9 and his lawyer were pursuing uh, getting the judge to release him early based on the fact that he cooperated, right? Like it's being reported that he's probably going to get his time reduced thanks to the fact that he cooperated during this case. He helped the FBI be able to take down a lot of really key members in the, uh, the Trey Blood gang uh, that they feel like they wouldn't have been able to get had it not been for the help of 6 9 infiltrating the operation and kind of like playing the role that he played. So, digging into that narrative, 6 9 or I'm going to read it to you guys. It's saying that 6 9 wrote it. I don't think that 6 9 wrote it. His lawyer probably wrote it. But 6 9 his mom, his his um, current girlfriend, and a bunch of different business associates that he's worked with have been writing letters to the judge in New York trying to get them to paint the picture of 6 9 being like a really nice guy, really nice kid, in hopes of getting that sentence reduced. This is something very common in the court system whenever, you know, other people's words count. So they do look to outside testimonials from people around you, people that have worked with you, people that have had some type of interaction with you to paint like a narrative of you, right? To see where they're going to take your, your, your case and how they're going to treat you um, based on the information that they receive. So I want to read this letter to you because, like I said, I don't think that 6 9 wrote this. I think his lawyer wrote this. But it has been put out there that 6 9 is the one that wrote this letter. So, as my, sentence, as my sentencing date approaches, I am becoming more and more overwhelmed with emotions. More than anything, I am extremely grateful for this opportunity to express my remorse to you, your honor over this situation. I find it difficult to find the right words to express what my life has been like for the last year. It honestly feels like my world is crashing down. There is no excuse, no justification, and no apology good enough in this world to explain my crimes. While I have been incarcerated, I had time to reflect on the recklessness and foolishness of my decisions. I wake up every morning asking myself, was it worth it? I know that my life will never be the same, but hopefully this change will be for the better because beyond all of this, I still consider myself a role model to millions of people as an artist, a celebrity, and as a human being. I'm happy that the public was able to witness me dealing with the consequences of my actions because I feel like it sheds a light on what can come with gang affiliation. I know that this is a part of the plan that God has for me, and I'm confident that I'm ready to face this thing head on. Before my arrest, I publicly disassociated myself from nine trade, but I knew that it would come with a price. I knew from previous incidents that the gang would retaliate against me for denouncing them in public. Prior to my arrest, I was kidnapped by members of the gang became aware of the fact that the mother of my child was having sexual relations with one of my co-defendants and that they were stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from me. I had a feeling of a really uh, blah 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 blah. I had a feeling of relief when I was arrested by the government because I felt stuck. I felt like the gang had control of my life and that I would never be able to escape their grip. I needed to do something before it was too late. 
I realize that I placed myself in this position with the choices that I made. I know that I am not a victim because my actions contributed to this mess. I've had plenty of time to reflect. And since the time of my arrest, I have asked myself, are you remorseful because of what happened or because you were caught? I now know that I'm remorseful for what happened because I was blessed with the gift of an opportunity that most people dream of, but I squandered it by getting my uh blah, blah. i squandered it by getting involved with the wrong people and misrepresenting myself when i should have been true to myself and my fans i'm sorry to the victims who were affected by my actions to my fans who look up to me and were misled to my family who depends on me and to this courtroom for this mess that i contributed to i'm truly sorry for the harm that i've caused if if given a second chance i would not let this court down and i would dedicate a portion of my life to helping others not make the same mistakes that I made. Sincerely, Daniel Hernandez. That does not sound like a letter 6 9 wrote. Um, I'm sorry, man. I seen a comment underneath one of the videos that was like, 6 9 out of jail, stupid, 6 9 in jail, dear your honor, sir. That shit had me weak. But um, I don't know, man. Just looking at this letter, they're taking the plea position, right? We've been talking about this. Ever since 6 9 has been arrested, he has been taking the narrative of, I was a misled youth caught up in the hype of rap dreams and gang affiliations it went too deep and boom now i'm in this shit and you know like i said that's the narrative they're sticking with on record off record um i've stated before that i think he's gonna get his time reduced um i don't think he'll be out i mean to be real with you he'll probably he'll probably be out i'm gonna guess by the end of next year there are people guessing first quarter next year like april so i don't think it'll be that early just because of how serious this is but he's definitely getting out earlier but the bigger picture that's being painted here or what I see coming out of the 6 9 thing is that I think that they are going to use him as an example for the rest of the music community, right? Because especially in rap, it's nothing new that rappers have gang affiliations. It's nothing new that rappers get caught up in crimes due to these gang affiliations. And it's nothing new that they abide and live by a code of we do not snitch. We do this shit. We hold it down. We go down on our own. We don't rap people out. But if they let 6 9 are out early, if the courts are able to show, hey, rappers, you come, you know, you come cooperate, you do what you got to do, you help us out, we're going to take care of you. We're going to make sure you get out. And once that wave hits out there, once people start to realize this, um, I think we're going to see a lot more artists in the future in the same position as 6 9 right now ratting out some of these gangs that they've been affiliated with, especially if they're doing some of the things behind the scenes that 6 9 is alleging that they were doing to him, right? Having sex with his baby moms, stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from him, extorting him. All these things that he's alleging were going on that I believe, I believe that they were doing this. Um, but I think it's going to push a completely different narrative about the way that artists and just, you know, artists who come from gang culture affiliate themselves with the police and the penal system and all of that. So, interesting to know what you think about it, man. You think these are six nines words? You think this is a lawyer words? Do you think this letter is gonna help? Let me know in the comment section below. Moving on, I wanna get into, what I wanna get into next? I wanna get into this Eminem and Nick Cannon beef, right? So, if you're not familiar, Eminem and Nick Cannon have been beefing since what, like 2009, I think? The beef started back when Eminem put out a song dissing Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. And this was when Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon were married, right? Um, like, freshly married at this point, too. So, that song sparked the beef. That beef lasted for, like, a good year and a half, maybe two years. And then it died out, right? Everyone thought everything was cool. We hadn't heard anything about it. I'm willing to bet that most people really didn't care, um, especially not now. But the beef has been reignited. So... Fat Joe dropped his Family Ties album last Friday, and he had Eminem as a feature on the song. Uh, the song is called, I think, Lord Bless. Let me find it for you. Yeah, so he was on the song Lord Above, uh, Fat Joe's new album. And Eminem, in true Eminem fashion, man, reignited the beef. Um, he came at Nick Cannon. Just this time, I didn't really do the Mariah Carey. Just Eminem versus you know, straight Nick Cannon beef. And this pretty much sparked like a big Twitter debate back and forth between them and then nick cannon dropped two diss tracks one that was solo just him and then another with him and some of the battle members from wild and out like conceited and hitman holla and some of those other battle rappers that he actually has around him um 
So I would say this about this beef, this this very long standing um, public petty beef is like I said earlier, I didn't think many people really cared in 2009. I think that less people care now. It feels to me like just an attempt at Eminem to get his name back out in the public, right? Um, because we know, we see this from Eminem all the time. Whenever he's laid low for a long time, whenever he doesn't really have anything going on, he comes out, he makes these outlandish remarks about whoever just he, he feels like at the time, and then boom, we're all talking about him the next week. That's been Eminem's formula since he came out, like, or at least in my lifetime when I was paying attention to Eminem. And I'll say this, man. I'll be real with you. The um, I think the verse was was trash. Like I, I didn't like the Eminem verse at Nick Cannon. I don't even really like Nick Cannon as an artist. I, I, I don't think many people like Nick Cannon as an artist. But I think that his diss songs were much higher quality diss songs than Eminem's. Now I will give Eminem the benefit of the doubt in saying that okay, he had one verse, and it was a surprise thing. Whereas Nick Cannon had time to plan, formulate, come back and go put whole songs together. But if we're talking about quality of diss. Nick Cannon's diss song was a much better diss song than Eminem's verse on that Fat Joe album. Like, yeah, shock value, but we're all over shock value from Eminem at this point. Like, we, we're shock valued out when it comes to Eminem. Um, but I think that this beef is going to die down pretty fast. Cause I don't really think that Nick Cannon cares. What kind of Another thing that really, like, bothered me about it was when Jordan Lucas jumped in, right? And Jordan Lucas is like, yo... Nick Cannon, you out here rap jumping, my nigga Eminem, we're going to have to get... And then he named all these rappers like Kendrick Cole and all these other people. And I was like, first off, bro, there's there's no way in hell that Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole being the upstanding um, black young men that they are, that they're going to diss a notable black entrepreneur in, in our culture, right? Because of Eminem wilding out and coming out of pocket, man. Like, I ain't going to lie, bro, like... You Eminem stands, man, these Eminem stands, bro, y'all got to learn to realize when Eminem is actually saying something and he's making a good point and when he's just talking for the hell of it, bro. And this is definitely a case where I feel like he is just talking for the hell of it. Like, he's just putting the verse out just because, I don't know, bro, I guess he's bored, bro. It's probably not a lot to do where he's at. I can see that. Um, so, like I said, bro, if we, had to, if we had to pick a winner from here, like, if you really care about who won this beef so far... I'm going to give it to Nick Cannon, man, because Nick's, Nick's verse didn't come off corny or the song didn't come off corny. It didn't feel spiteful. It didn't feel random, right? At this point, he's defending himself. And I'm just I'm just sick of, like, Eminem and his his trying to be, like, shock culture antics. It's like, it's done, bro. We're over that. So moving on to other news, man. The top 50 albums of the year um, has been released via Nielsen and SoundScan, which if you don't know, Nielsen is pretty much the company responsible for tracking album sales and streaming sales, and then they're pretty much how you know who sold what first week. Um, so they have compiled a list of the top 50 albums of this year based off of streaming numbers and pure album sales, and the list is interesting, man. Like It, 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 it doesn't surprise me that majority of the list are rap artists, right? Like We've seen rap kind of come in and dominate music and music sales for the last... Pfft, I would argue four or five years at the very least since it became like super pop. Yeah, so I would say like four or five years ago. So we're looking at top 10, man, Lil Nas X. So we're coming in top 10. We're looking at Post Malone, Hollywood's Be Bleeding. We got Billie Eilish, When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Ariana Grande, Thank You Next. Taylor Swift, Lover, Khalid, Free Spirit. Another Post Malone, Beer Bones and Bentleys. Lil Nas X, Seven, Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper, Drake, Scorpion, A Boogie with the hoodie, Astro C I mean hoodie season, and then we go into Travis Scott Astro World and the list goes on. So like I said, there are the top ten is dominated by pop acts, right? Like we could argue about Post Malone being a rapper or not. These new albums, he's pop. Um but it's cool to see Lil Nas X make it into that, which I would even argue that Lil Nas X is probably more of a pop artist at this point than a rapper. Um but majority of the list is dominated by rappers like i said we got travis scott on here bro. we got lizzo juice world meek mill um the baby the dreamville compilation young thug bro 21 savage cardi b xx um lil baby and gunner's project uh nipsey hustle lil tecca future gunna kodak black rap is dominating the charts man so it's always interesting to look at these these end of the year lists well the end of the year list based on like pure numbers because you can't really debate album sales, right? Um, and so that's why I say the pop artists kind of dumb in the top 10. What can you do about it? We know why most of those artists outsell most of these 
these other rappers and stuff. But the fact that some of these younger artists, man, like Lil Tecca, Lil Nas X, um, even A Boogie hasn't been out that long or you know, been super established enough, but they're all penetrating and showing the world that, hey, you know, rap culture is still very mainstream. We are dominating when it comes to sales. And even just showing like other people in the rap community that, hey, rap fans still buy music. Like they bought my music and streamed my music enough to put me in the top 50 albums of the year. Which if you think about all of the music that came out this year, but it's probably like 50 albums probably came out in a month's time span. That's amazing. That's dope. So I want to know some of your thoughts on that. What has been your favorite album of the year? Oh, shit, let's, let's step it up a notch. What's been your favorite three albums of the year, man? I'm going to think about it. I don't have anything right now. By the time I post this video, I'll have something. I'm going to put mine in the comment section below too. But I want to know, man, like what has been your favorite project of the year? Do you agree with the albums on this list? Um, do you wish there was something that had made it on here or an artist that you wish you made it? Let me know, like I said, in the comment section or come holler at me on Instagram about it. And lastly, I want to get into this X album, man, because last week I said I was going to come in here and talk about it after I listened to it. So over this week, I've listened to it like four times, man, once in the gym, once in my car, once in the bathroom, and then once just like walking around the house cleaning up. So it's safe to say that I've lived with it for a minute at this point. So I feel very confident in what I'm about to say. That album was not good. That album was trash, man. Um, and I think a lot of us knew that it was going to be, right? Like, I didn't really see too many X fans feeling confident about this album. Now, I do feel that this project shouldn't have came out. Even listening to the songs, it felt like a clout, like it just was a clout magnet, right? Because all of the songs clearly felt unfinished, which no surprise, right? But I will even argue that when Skins came out, I saw people bashing that album. And I don't think that Skins is a bad album, right? I just think that it was ill-timed. That they, his estate could have waited a couple more months and to drop their project. I would even argue that if Skins was the album that came out last week, we, meaning us X fans, would be having a much different conversation. But this project right here, Bad Volume, Bad Vibes Forever Volume 2, is not the one, man. It feels like it was just being used more so as a springboard for some of his, I guess, friends or rap associates. Uh, like I said, none of the songs felt genuine. None of them felt finished. It felt like a very incomplete project that should have just stayed on whatever hard drive that they found this on. Um, and then his mom released a statement that kind of got to me, too. Uh, she had wrote some, put something out, Dear Supporters, Bad Vibes Forever came out last Friday and is currently number three in the race for number one album on the charts this week. Ja is and always has been an independent artist, which I did not know that until this, because I thought that he signed a deal right before he passed. Maybe they let him out the deal because he passed, but I could have swore X had signed right before. He doesn't have the support of a major label, streaming platform, radio promotion like other artists on this list, and without being here, he doesn't even have the ability to promote his own work. But he has the strongest and most loyal family of supporters in the world. So we're asking you guys to help by streaming and sharing the album as much as you can all week. We have until Friday to make this count. Please show your support and do everything to help Jock get where he deserves to be at number one. Um, so I said last week, man, I wholeheartedly felt like this album was just like a cash grab by his estate, whoever is running his estate. I think it's his mom. Because um, it, it just, this album should not have come out, man. Like, I, I could have lived without Bad Vibes Forever Volume 2. Um, so, and I will say this, luckily for us, this is the last one, right? Like they're deeming this is the last time we would hear any X music or any new X music. And I think that's perfectly fine, man. Like when an artist passes, um, I think we should just be allowed to live with the music they created, live with the legacy they built for themselves and live with the quality of work that they were proud of and happy to put out. Not something that, you know, we being selfish as fans think that we want from them. Because we, we a lot of times as fans will ask for things from artists, and then they give it to us, and we hate it, and it completely changes their legacy and the way we think about them. And I would much rather have the X legacy stop at question mark or stop at skins than for them to continue with trying to just stay, keep his name out there and keep him currently in the conversation. I don't like that, man. So, of course, I'm sure some people disagree, but... I mean, I'm not an album writer, man, but if I really had to rate this album, bro, like, like dead ass, like a, like a one out of 10 or two out of 10. It was like two songs and I like, but real shit, like a two out of 10. Other than that, man, before I close this out, we got a lot of new music that came out today. 
Uh, when it comes to projects, Stormzy dropped the project. Free Nationals, which Free Nationals is the band that Anderson Pat works with a lot. Or actually might be his band. I'm not sure. Somebody let me know in the comment section. Um, Free Nationals dropped the project if you're in the R&B. Kei dropped the project today. Um, we got some songs from Russ. We got songs from Lil TJ. We got some, oh, Smoke Perp dropped Dead Star 2. And Lil Uzi Vert has finally dropped the Futsal Shuffle song that was going viral when he posted that clip. So that's not even it, man. My favorite song that came out today that I've listened to so far is this. NBA Youngboy Dirty Diana song. He went and remixed uh, Michael Jackson's Dirty Diana, and he's talking about Floyd Mayweather's daughter, which he used to date Floyd Mayweather's daughter. So very hilarious song that I never would have expected to see from NBA Youngboy. But like I said, a lot of new music coming out today. If there's anything that you're checking for that you're interested in, drop that in the comment section below as well. I'm always trying to check new stuff out, stay up on game to what y'all are listening to. Other than that, if you like this video, please share, subscribe, let some people know, get some people in on the conversation. Like I said, come and talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Cody Savior. Let me know what you think about some of these topics. Other than that, I will see y'all next week. Peace.